We are back at it with another hardcore nuts log, and this time we're doing Pokemon Emerald, but we're also doing a randomizer challenge. So I've never done a randomizer on any of these Pokemon games before, so this is my first attempt. I might have to, in the future, definitely update or change some settings because um, some of some very interesting uh, playthrough. So we begin by helping out Professor Birch with a Zigzagoon, and I have my choice between a Casper, Grimer, and a Victory Bell as my starter. Um, I decided, do I want to go for the evolution or do I, I want to go for the already evolved Pokemon and just start out with some bulk? So I decided to go with the Victory Bell and luckily enough the Zigzagoon shed its form and became a Melodic during the battle. So Victory Bell was able to quickly take that thing out before um, it could actually do any damage. So heading back to Professor Birch's lab here, um, when I was able to finally properly re receive Victory Bell and I wound up naming her Python. Uh, so it's definitely going to be an interesting start to the journey because I know Victory Bell doesn't really learn any moves as a fully evolved Pokemon. So the moves that it has is what we're going to be using for the duration of the challenge, essentially. Um, so the first real challenge, the first potential real challenge is against May here as she sends out a Cacnea against the Victory Bell, which is a horrible type matchup right now since uh, Victory Bell doesn't have any poison type moves, but since Cacnea can't really hurt Victory Bell, it's just almost like a stalemate of a challenge here. Uh, so Cacnea finally goes down with a few Razor Leafs and uh, Victory Bell gains another level before we move on. So once we get the Pokeballs, um, we got our first encounter being a Zubat here. Uh, so catch it, and I decided to name it Sequel. Um, yeah, so having like a, um, a friendship based evolution is going to be interesting as well. Uh, and then the next encounter here, just trying to fill up on all the encounters, run into a Swallow that I named Swift and uh, head to uh, the right side Petal Bird and run into a Chikorita, uh, just catching everything I see here since this is a randomizer and this is completely new. Uh, run to name the Chikorita C Sharp before heading to the woods and running into a Mill Tank, which I eventually catch as well, just building out the team here, calling him Dot Net, uh, before heading to Rustboro and challenging Roxanne the first gym here. So I randomize the types too with these challenges. So yeah, I think just everything's just gonna be completely random and new for me. Uh, so she's, she leads with a hit on top against my Victory Bell and fighting really can't hurt uh, Victory Bell, the poison type here. So take out the Victory Bell with a few Razor Leaves before she sends in uh, Politoed and Politoed goes for the Parish Song here. I'm going with a, a great type matchup so far, uh, nothing too dangerous has come out yet. Uh, but unfortunately Victory Bell is asleep with that Hypnosis earlier. Um, as the parish count does drop, I just decided just to burn it all and just on the last one just swap in Chikorita as she swaps in the Graveler here. Again, a great tight matchup. Um, yeah, since Chikorita is super effective against Graveler here as she sends back in the Polito that only seems to only have water then as a damaging move. Um, so I'm just going for the razor leaf here. I wanted to get the poison off, poison powder, but unfortunately I get put to sleep again with hypnosis and only with one term sleep, wake up and get the poison powder off. Uh, she goes for the healing with the potion, but it's not really going to matter too much since this polyester doesn't look like it's, um, it has any other damaging moves other than water gun. So it goes for the Parasong again. So at this point, I know I have this match in the bag, uh, but with that final Razor Leaf, I'm able to seal the victory and get my first gym badge. And not only do I get my first gym badge, but Chikorita does reach level 16 and allowing it to evolve into Bayleaf. Now, uh, running into the next encounter uh, right above is this Nidoran female that I just catched and decided to name Java before heading into Rust Turf Tunnel, running into Blaylai here. Uh, and I decided to definitely catch this as this was definitely going, I've never used the Blaylai in a playthrough before, uh, nickname of Kotlin, and uh, decided to switch out the Nidoran for the Blaylai since I thought Glay using Blaylai would be way more interesting and more varied. I'm um, having a nice, strong ice type on the team this early on. Um, so, uh, battling May before heading out of Rustboro City, she uh, surprises and sends out a pigeon uh, as Miltank definitely just takes it out with a few stomps and she sends in Slowbro next. 
Now with the slow roll coming in, I decided to come in, go into day leaf here. As it goes for the yawn, I go for the poison since I'm going to be asleep soon. So I might as well get that uh, passive damage off on um, just kind of rolling in now. As it goes for another yawn as I'm already asleep, it just goes for the growl next. Um, at this point, I haven't seen a real damaging move yet, so I'm thinking I'm kind of in the clear here. I'm just, this slow bro is really not going to hurt me. So I finally wake up and go for the Razor Leaf, which takes it out in one shot, um, netting me the victory against May. So in Dufer, in Granite Cave, I, with my next encounter, I encounter a Venonat, uh, as I just name Objective C here. Uh, don't add it to the team before battling Brawly here. Um, so Brawly leads with a Earth Swing as I lead with my Swellow. I uh, go for a few wing attacks here before he decides to go for the Super Potion, healing it up to full health. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I can go for the double team, hope for the uh, the misses here, and knowing that Earth Swing could almost take out Swellow in another hit, but fortunately he survives on four hit points as I swap into Mill Tank here and just go for the defense curl to kind of um, tank whatever this Earth Ring is going to throw at me. Since this Earth Ring is proving to be kind of a problem, I don't think anyone else on my team can really um, stand up to this thing kind of effectively other than Mill Tank here. Uh, so finally taking out Earth Ring there, he sends in a Nuzleaf, which really isn't a problem since he'll take out speed, just a couple of stomps, takes it out. Now up next is Grumpig, and this Grumpig has proved to be quite a challenge. Um, it went for the Psych Up, which then copied my Miltank's defense curls earlier, so now it's just kind of physically bulky at this point, so all my stomps really aren't doing too much damage. At this point, I'm just kind of hoping for flinch hacks here and then burning all the rest of Brawly's uh, super potions here. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this Grumpig might not have any attacking moves, so I decided to swap into Victory Bell. Uh, I know I, have the, I don't have that tight matchup here, but at this point, grass moves are still considered special, I think, so I was thinking the damage. Okay, I can at least get some better damage than using a physical move, but it does surprise me with the side beam there, forcing me to swap back into uh, Bayleaf here, and then just going for the poison to get that extra damage. Now this Grumpig's side beam is actually super strong, much stronger than I'm expecting, and I know no one else on my team can really um, tank one of these side beams, so I decided to just go into Glalie here uh, and use Bite to finish off the Grumpig, and then me the second gym badge. Now, in um, Duford, I do get the old rod and fish for my next encounter, this Jump Pluff here, uh, is what I, that I wound up nicknaming JavaScript. Um, just to build out the team, just get more uh, Pokemon in the box to use. Now, right above Slayport City, I run into a Mary that I named Scala. And uh, up next is the uh, one of the more difficult uh, May battles. But fortunately, since everything's all randomized, then it wasn't too bad. So she leads in with the Voltor, which gets taken out with a couple of stomps, and then decides to swap into an Aerodactyl here, which, not gonna lie, is pretty um, pretty threatening for the team here. Uh, with one wing attack on Victory Bell, just decided to scare me off here, almost took it out. I decided to swap into Glalie. Uh, just going with the Ice Wind so I can at least slow it down. Um, as the next Icy Wind misses, it goes for the Agility to get that speed back, hoping that Glalie can survive one, one more wing attack, and it does, um, using another Ice Wind to take it out finally, as she goes for the Tropius. Now at this point I'm thinking, okay, I can, I can really take out Tropius, it's not too much of an issue, I just swap in my Swallow here, and go for a wing attack as it goes for the Growth. Go for another wing attack, which winds up taking it out, and I wind up beating May. And before the next gym badge, I decided to evolve Zubat into Golbat here, um, just to have a, a nice, a nice, good, a nice strong team before Watson. So up against Watson, he does start off with an Elekis. So at this point, okay, it's pretty on point. He's the electric type, an electric type gym leader. Um, so sticking in with the Victory Bell, just using these special moves here to avoid that physical contact so I don't get that paralysis. Um, I decided to go for the Sleep Powder eventually just to put it asleep so that those Thunder Punches can, so I can just dodge those Thunder Punches and burn up that light screen there. Um, at the last moment, he does swap into Pidgeot here, 
And knowing that, just go into mill tank, knowing that mill tank can really just tank a lot of what you can really throw at it. Um, I get the lucky crit there with stomp as it just heals up with berry there. I go for another stomp as he goes for the super potion. Um, at this point, Pidgey does start using the going for the sand attack on that, those accuracy strats, and I do miss a stomp there as Pidgey does get the critical hit on the gust. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna just swap into the newly acquired gold bat to really finish off this Pidgey with a couple of wing attacks, hopefully, but he does swap in uh, his Elekid again, but um, since Elekid was at low health, wing attack did take it out in one shot. He swapped into Bayleaf here, and I decided to stick into Golbat since I have a type advantage and a couple of wing attacks. Takes out that Bayleaf either way. Um, he decides to send in Pineco after that, which was very interesting. Um, not just going back into Pidgeot, but with a couple of wing attacks here, definitely taking out that Pineco, no problem whatsoever. So with Pidgeot back in, he does go for the Super Potion again as I go for another wing attack. And now he's starting to get up again with the sand attack strategy, but I'm hoping that I just don't miss. Um, and that last wing attack doesn't miss. I land the hit and earn the next gym badge. So Watson was definitely going to be a tough challenge, but luckily we did get through him as we go into Flannery here. Um, I decided to deal with the Swallow this time. At this point, Swallow's really um, stepping up here. Um, so got the draft rig down, but with a few wing attacks, but. Flannery goes for the Hyper Potion to heal it back up. So I go for another Wing Attack and finally take out this Giraffe Ray. Uh, up next, she sends in Cast Form, which is not a problem at all for this team. Uh, but I do swap in my Mill Tank just in case the Powder Snow did show up. Um, so it goes for the Rain Dance, transforming itself into the Water Form. Um, so just a, a few uh, stomps here. Just got the, the Flinch off. But another stomp was enough to take out that cast form. Up next, she sends in Hypno here. And again, just going for the same stomp, flinch, hacks uh, strategy as it goes for the hypnosis and finally puts Miltank asleep. And with that, I decide, okay, I'm just gonna switch in, switch into with Glalie, and then go for the crunch uh, to take out that Hypno in one shot. Uh, up next is Barboach, which again is not too much of an issue for this team since I have two. Uh, strong grass types in the back here, so I just decided to swap into Bayleaf as it starts setting up with two amnesias. Uh, even with two amnesias, um, Razor Leaf does do over a little bit over half health, and another Razor Leaf is enough to take out the Barboach, netting me the fourth gem badge at this point. Uh, so things are looking pretty good as I go into the Norman gem badge. So I, he starts off with Marsh Chunk as I leave with Mill Tank. And I immediately swap into Victory Bell here as it goes for the Mud Shot, lowering my speed. Um, he goes for the Bite as I go for the Vine Whip, taking out the Marsh Chop in one shot. Up next, he sends in a Drowsy as I swap with swap with my Glalie here. I had to go for the Crunch, the Dark type move to to really just take out this Drowsy and no attempt to take out the Drowsy in one shot. But he goes for the Disable, disabling my Crunch, so I was forced to use Headbutt, taking it out in another hit. Now, since uh, Drowsy's gone, the Disable is off. Um, as I go for the uh, Icy Wind here, just to kind of lower Pelipper's speed as much as possible. Um, as it goes for the Mist here, just keep firing off the Icy Wind, getting, getting that stab. Um, I know it's doing neutral damage, but that stab right now is the best bet. I just kind of wanted to burn Pelipper, because I know Pelipper is not really not really going to be able to hit Glalie too, too hard. So eventually I was able to take out that Pelipper as he sends in Cleffa. Now at this point I'm just, okay, let me just swap in um, Gold back to get that easy win here. So I go for the wing attack and it turns out to be a critical hit as it goes for Sing and heals up with the Citrus Fairy. Now at this point I'm just thinking, okay, I don't think Cleffa can really hurt Gold back too much. So I just decided to swap in and just wait for the sleep to wear off. Um, so I just eventually get the win off and beat Norman before heading to the Weather Institute. And after um, getting cast form, the gift Pokemon, um, in this case it randomized into a Gligar. Uh, so Gligar definitely a great addition to the team. Unfortunately it's Generation 3 so I'm going to get the, the, um, the evolution here but I just nickname an HTML before facing off May before reaching Fall Over Town. Uh, so May leads with a Wooper as I lead with Victory Bell, go for the Vine Whip, take it out with one shot. She sends in Silpin and I send in Golbat. 
Now I go for the wing attack here because I know Silk is not really going to be able to touch Golbat at all. And a couple of wing attacks was able to take it out, no problem whatsoever. Uh, she sends in a Dust Bowl and I just decide to stay in with uh, Golbat here. Because I don't think um, Dust Bowl is really going to be able to touch, you know, Golbat or really be a threat to Golbat whatsoever. So even though I'm confused, I'm st I still land like one bite and I finally snap out, land another bite and eventually take out that Dust Bowl, winning me the match. Now unfortunately this is where the first two deaths come into play. I was in the Fall Over Gym. And unfortunately, I ran into a golem that used self-destruct, taking out Swallow and Bayleaf in one shot and one self-destruct. I was hoping Bayleaf to at least survive that, but unfortunately, it didn't play out like that. So trying to recoup some losses here, I found a Swablu that I nicknamed CSS. Um, and then also on the route next to Follower, I run into a Kingler that I also catch. Uh, just kind of and use ph and nickname php uh, so finally battling the gym leader here she also went to the same spot and caught a kingler as i send in my kingler um, knowing that this is going to be a kind of a you know a stalemate of a fight i decided to swap in my kingler into victory bell go for the razor leaf and take out her kingler in one shot there uh, up next she sends in pidgeotto which is kind of a kind of a threat for this team pretty fast, uh, but I send in my Glalie like, that has Icy Wind here to kind of slow it down if it doesn't take it out on one shot anyway. So I go for the slowdown, but it's still faster than Glalie's. It goes for the wing attack there. Um, I go for the Icy Wind, but I miss, but another Icy Wind would be enough to take it out anyway. That critical hit definitely didn't matter. And she sends in on the champ, which definitely a threat for this team. Um, I decided to, since I don't have Swellow anymore, I swap in Golbat here with the wing attack, um, doing less than a little bit less than half health, but that second wing attack does get a crit, which definitely you know, thinking mattered, um, taking it out. And she sends in a Mudkip as Golbat goes for another crit wing attack um, with two wing attacks, taking it out. And lastly, she sends in a Deli Bird, which um, wing attack just brought it down to half health, and two wing attacks later, I was able to be with Deli Bird for the next gem badge. Um, then unfortunately, a little bit after that, I stayed in with Kingler and it got taken out by an Elekid. Um, so I decided to swap it with a Venonat that I immediately evolved since the level cap is now 42. I immediately evolved it into a Venomoth here just to add some another body to the team. Um, so I eventually run into a Clefable as well that I decide to catch um, a nickname Ruby before finally um, evolving Golbat. Now this is the first friendship evolution in these Nuzlocke challenges, so it was pretty cool to get. Um, so yeah, Golbat evolved into a Crobat before heading to Mount Pyre and running into a Shroomish here in the water. I uh, decided to catch it because if my if another grass type Pokemon goes, it'd be great to have another one. I just think they Pearl and atop Mount Pyre. I run into a Swalot here, and unfortunately I forgot that I already nicknamed Mary Scala, so I just nicknamed Swalot Scala as well. Um, so in Lily Cove with the last Trainer May battle, she does send in the Steelix as I go for my Mill Tank, which I did teach Surf. Uh, I go for the Strength um, just to see how much it would do and uh, possibly break the Sturdy. And just go for the Surf here, which didn't really do too much at all anyway. Uh, but the second Surf did get a critical hit, taking out that Steelix. Um, up next, she sends in a Combuskin as I decide, okay, which, which Pokemon can actually deal with this. Um, I decided to send in my Crobat here uh, to outspeed and definitely with the Wing Attack. It did more than half health, and she did get the Sand Attack off, but Wing Attack does connect the second time, taking it out. Up next, she sends in a Relicanth, and I'm more than prepared to take out a Water Rock type with my starter, uh, Victory Bell here. So I send in Victory Bell, go for the Vine Whip, taking out in one shot. Um, up next, she sends in a Meganium. Um, and at this point, I'm just thinking, okay, with we'll Pokemon, I have a lot of options for this. I decided to send in a Venomoth just to see what, you know, just to see what its battle prowess can really do here. I uh, go for the Stun Spore, but it misses, unfortunately. And with that Body Slam taking it down pretty low, I decided to swap into Glalie here just to get that, that revenge off. Um, but unfortunately, it goes for the Body Slam and per, uh, paralyzing Glalie here. 
Uh, I go for the icy wind. I fi finally connects, lowering its speed a little bit. So that's definitely a plus as I swap in my Crobat here. Uh, I go for the wing attack, and I was able to, I was able to get a crit and take it out in one shot, uh, netting me the victory over May. Now, unfortunately, dealing with Team Aqua's issues or Team Aqua, one of the evil teams, I ran into this random Deoxys, which kind of just wrecked my Crobat with a swap in pursuit. So, yeah, unfortunately, lost the Crobat here, so I decided to swap in with Gligar just for that, you know, the second flying type here, or, or at least the, the physical flying type here. So up against Maxi, he sends in a pseudo Budo as I send in my victory bell. Uh, I go for the original leaf, which doesn't get the um, the KO, but he goes for the super potion. The vine whip also doesn't go for the KO, which was uh, surprising. Um, so he sends in a Suicune. Uh, that's one thing I noticed with this randomizer is a lot of trainers had, you know, legendary Pokemon, which I was not expecting. Uh, but it was pretty fun to kind of face these things and just regular, using regular Pokemon. Um, but fortunately, I did have a grass type here to kind of face off against Suicune. Suicune not really doing too much against Victory Bell, and Victory Bell eventually getting the win here. Um, and then lastly, he sends out a Carvana, which goes down in one Vine Whip, which was pretty interesting since Maxi is having water types would be an antithesis to his whole ideal. Uh, but after the battle, I decide to evolve my Swablu into Alteria here before taking on the seventh gym leaders. Um, so this gym match could have gone much worse than it did. Um, I was lucky enough with this randomizer to really not have too much of a challenge ahead of me. So I decided to leave with Miltank and Glalai as they send in Spinda and, to and Togetic. Um, with Glalai going for the Ice Beam and Miltank really focusing on that Spinda as it goes for the Dizzy Punch, trying to get the confusion off on the team. Um, after a few potions, Miltank definitely was able to take out Spinda there, um, as Glalai is still working on Togetic here with Ice Beams. Um, so as they send in Spiel, you know, and they go for another Hyper Potion on that Togetic, but Miltank is just working on the Spiel here, while Glalai is still trying to take out this Togetic. Um, so Spiel goes for the Hail, which doesn't really affect the Layla, it doesn't affect Layla at all. I'm only doing passive damage on this mill tank here, but Togetic does uh, use his Follow Me, which just reroutes all the moves used to it. Um, and then mill tank is able to take it out with a Body Slam as Layla used the Ice Beam on Psyduck. Um, so as the last two Pokemon, uh, definitely just going for the strength and just doing, just focusing on one Pokemon at a time. But Miltank was able to take out that Psyduck in one shot as Glalie is focusing on Sfeel now. Uh, go for another strength with Miltank, another headbutt with Glalie. I was able to take out Sfeel, netting me the seventh gym badge. Now, right beneath Moss Deep City, I was able to find a Marsh Top here, uh, which is a great find for this game. and I wound up naming him TypeScript uh, before swapping out with Gligar and definitely um, going to evolve it up since the level cap is now 46. Uh, would definitely be a great addition to this team, especially heading into all the final battles in the, the Elite Four and the Champion. So dealing with um, Team Aqua and Archie's story here with Kyogre, uh, he leads with a Middle Queen as I leave my Mill Tank. I just go for the Surf, which doesn't do, it doesn't even do half health. Um, I'm just going for another surf here. So I definitely don't want to get that poison pollen off. Um, as it goes for another heal, I'll go for another surf. Um, just and then finishing off with the body slam. And unfortunately, I did get poison with poison point here as he sends in blade, his own blade lie. Now at this point, a lot of my team members can't deal with ice type moves. Uh, so I decided to stay in with Mill Tank, go for the Body Slam, but unfortunately we use Protect. But the second Body Slam goes through, dealing more than half health. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, Mill Tank can really just outspeed this and eventually just take it out. This poison is not really um, causing too much of an issue at this point. Um, but I decided to swap into my own Glalie to kind of just resist any ice moves that are going to be thrown my way. Uh, just going for the Headbutt um, and finally taking it out. 
Um, I'm Nessie Sens in Alakazam, and I just stay in and just go for the crunch, hoping it would take it out, but it does more than half health, which is great. Uh, able to survive the psychic here and then take it out with another crunch. Um, and this Nanny Beetle win over Archie. And finally dealing with that storyline, leading into the last gym battle here against Juan, uh, as he sends in an Aeron, and I leave with my Alteria, but swap into my Swampert, um, as he goes for the uh, Protect, as I go for Earthquake here. Now, Earthquake definitely just takes it out in one shot. Uh, definitely not lucky with these gym leaders and have them having, you know, stage one Pokemon. Um, he sends in a Chikorita next as I swap into a Glalie, but unfortunately I get paralyzed on that Body Slam. Uh, next turn I go for the Ice Beam, which it survives on one health, due, thankfully due, for the, um, due from the light screen there. Uh, I go for another Ice Beam, which does take it out um, as he sends in a Drowsy. So at this point I decide to stay in, because I don't think Drowsy is really going to damage uh, Glalie too, too drastically. So it goes for the sidekick, not really doing too much. The light screen finally wearing off. And with this final crunch, finally taking it out. Now he sends it in Curlia next. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, Glalie's put in a lot of work. It's time we can um, actually just use other Pokemon. So I send in my Melting because it goes for the future site. And Body Slam really does a lot of damage as he goes for the Hyper Potion, and I just go for another Body Slam again. Uh, with this feature Sight Attack, it doesn't really do too much either. I was um, kind of concerned about that, but luckily, Mil Tank has got that bulk. Now, his final Pokemon is a Doduo, which Body Slam must have left it on one health as it's going for the Tri Attack. But I go for another Body Slam, netting me the win. And that's the final gym badge. Now, just going into the Elite Four here. Uh, first up is Elite Four Cindy as he sends in a Ho Ho. Uh, I leave with my Mill Tank going for the Body Slam, hoping I can get some sort of paralysis off on this thing. Um, but unfortunately, it does reveal that he has Recover. And um, thinking I'm not doing too much damage with Body Slam to really uh, make it a net positive here. Uh, but it, fortunately, he does go for the Fire Blast and allowing Body Slam to take it out. With that um, threat out of the way, he does send in Magby, which I was able to take out with a critical hit Surf. Um, next up is he sends in his Pelipper, which goes for the Protect as I go for Strength. Not really doing um, too, too much damage. Uh, just go for the Strength, just decide to just keep Mill Tank in here uh, as much as possible. As it goes for the, as it heals up with Full Restore, just continually going for um, these physical moves. Uh, trying to get the process of uh, Body Slam, didn't get it, so I just go for the Strength, finally taking out that Pelipper. Up next, he sends in a Mine In, but at this point I'm thinking, okay, I should just swap into Swamper so I don't get hit with some powerful Electro-type moves. Uh, I go for the Earthquake, taking it out in one shot here. And the last but not least, he sends in his Mawile as I go for another Earthquake, taking it out in one shot again. Netting me the first win here. So up next is Phoebe, and she sends in Latios. Now I don't know why all these Elite Four members had uh, Legendaries, but it was such a challenge um, going into this. So with Latios on the table now, I just decided to swap into Glalie since it has the type advantage. Um, with Latios just going for the Psychics here and almost taking out Glalie, as Glalie almost takes out Latios with the Ice Beam. I decided to swap into Miltank as I know Phoebe's going to uh, use a full restore here. So I'm going for the Body Slam, hoping to get a Paralysis off to slow this thing down. I'm able to get the Paralysis off and uh, having the Parahax activate. Uh, going for a strength to finally take out that lad boss. Now, up next is Slowbro, so I was contemplating sending in Victory Bell here. Um, I know Slowbro's part sidekick, and that's that would be the trade off here. Uh, but fortunately, it just goes for a, a defense curl or a curse, no withdraw. Um, as I swap in my Swamper here and just going for the Earthquake, as it tries to disable the Earthquake. Um, it uses a citrus, bell, a citrus Berry to heal up a little bit as I go in for Victory Bell, just kind of hoping that Slowbro doesn't have a psychic type move here, since it's really uh, buffing up its defense. So Victory Bell is able to take it out with a couple of Vine Whips as she sends in a Puchiano, which 
Definitely lucked out here with this Poochiana, just taking it out with one razor leaf. Uh, up next, she sends in a Gligar, which I decide to swap into uh, Alteria here to really just deal with this thing. Going for the Dragon Breath, uh, not doing too much damage um, on Gligar. Alternatively, not just doing not doing ten damage at all. I'm just going for the Dragon Breath to hopefully get the paralysis off. Uh, but I just wind up taking it out eventually anyway, as he, she sends in her last Pokemon, Azumo. And I just swap into Victory Bell as it goes for the double edge here. Not doing too much damage, so it might not have huge power. Uh, but I'm going for the Razor Leaf, I get the critical hit, taking it out in one shot. Now, up next is Glacia, and she leads in with an Umbreon. As I lead in with my Swampert here, going for the Earthquake as she goes for Screech. Uh, I go for the waterfall, just seeing if you know physical versus special would be better. Um, so I just go for another earthquake, getting that crit, which didn't matter, taking it out with that Umbreon. Now she sends in Nine Tails next, which outspeeds and goes for the Confuse Ray. So I'm hoping I can break through this confusion. I wind up breaking through, going for the earthquake, taking out that Nine Tails in one shot, which would have been really a real problem for this team. Um, up next, she sends in a Rhyhorn. So at this point, I'm just thinking, okay, let me just get that. Um, confusion off and just swapping with my victory bell as it goes for the earthquake as i go for the razor leaf taking it out in one shot up next is a vaporeon and at this point i'm thinking okay um, you know victory bell has that type advantage i can just stay in and just fish for critical hits with razor leaf but it does show uh, Aurora Beam there, which definitely scares off victory bell as i send in glaylight here to kind of soak up that Aurora Beam. I go for the Crunch, hoping it would take it out, but unfortunately, it survives on a little bit of health. It goes for the Hydro Pump, getting a crit, taking out Glalai. Uh, so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, what point can really, you know, deal with this? So I decided to send in Venom off here just to see, hopefully get that quick kill, but Glacia goes for the Full Restores. I go for the Psychic. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, let me just go for the Accuracy Strat, just lowering uh, Vaporeon's Accuracy with Flash here, but it does connect with all the Hydro Pumps, taking out Venomoth as well. Now, at this point, I'm thinking uh, there's probably no good Pokemon to send in, um, the best bet probably being Swampert. Uh, going for the Earthquake, it's not doing too much, and I don't want to burn all of um, Earthquake's power points at this point in the challenge. So I just go for a couple of uh, takedowns here just to vary it up a little bit. Go for another Earthquake, which doesn't take it out, but at this point I'm thinking, you know, it's a, I just gotta use what I got here. Um, and go for the takedown, which gets the lucky critical hit, finally taking out that that uh, Vaporeon as she sends in Celebi here. Now, Celebi definitely is a threat to Swampert, so I decided to switch out into Alteria as it goes for the Parasong for some reason, putting the timer on itself. As I go for the Dragon Dance, I was expecting this battle to be kind of a hard fight against the Celebi, but with the, um, the Parish the Parish Song in effect, um, definitely I knew I was going to win this eventually anyway. So on the last turn, I decide to swap into Miltank, hoping that it doesn't get like a, some lucky crit here. As its count goes to zero, taking itself out with Parish Song and netting me the win. Uh, up next is the final member, Drake, and he leads with a Registeel, which I mean, I've never fought Registeel to, at this caliber before. So it was a real challenge to really get through this thing as it goes for an Iron Defense. And since it's uh, since it was showing that it was, you know, bulking up its physical defenses, I decided to switch my tactic to using special moves with Waterfall. But then it used Amnesia, and at this point, um, Waterfall is not doing any damage, and now it's using a bunch of ancient powers, probably fishing for the Omni Boost. And at this point, I, I, I just I have to burn the ancient power, um, you know, power points. So I go for the dives. It has that two turn. Uh, two-stage kind of move here but now it's just buffing up all of its uh, all of its defenses and making this kind of a, um, a very very long grindy battle um, it tries to go for, go for zap cannon for some reason it might be 
out of other moves and other options at this point. Um, yeah, having Ancient Power, Amnesia, Iron Defense, and Zap Cannon. Um, so at this point, it's just going to be a battle of attrition because it's just, I wonder at this point, its defenses are way too high for my Pokemon to really deal with. And um, I'm just kind of swapping back and forth between Pokemon, um, thinking, you know, how many Zap Cannons does it have left? I don't want it to, to hit that random uh, Zap Cannon move and just take out a Pokemon randomly here. So I decided to put it asleep with Victory Bell, and the idea with sending in Victory Bell here was to fish for all of the critical hits that I can muster. And I finally get one, um, so I'm making the battle not, not too um, long, I'm hoping, but uh, for some reason Drake isn't healing up Registeel, and I'm thinking it's because you know, Rachel doesn't have any usable moves left, so I go go for the final Razor Leaf here, which gets a crit, finally taking this thing out, which was a huge roadblock for this team here, and I luck out um, as he sends in a Horsey next as Victory Bell takes it out in one Razor Leaf. I luck out again as he sends in a Zigzagoon, which Razor Leaf almost takes out. Um, with the Horsey and the Zigzagoon, I'm, at this point I'm thinking it's because of that Registeel that um, I can hopefully have a breeze through a challenge with this uh, with Drake here. So after Miltake takes out Zigzagoon, he sends in Lantern, which I decide to send in my uh, Swampert, but unfortunately he doesn't have any more Earthquake. Um, he doesn't have any more access to Earthquake, so I just go for the the takedown, the strength there as I just swap into Victory Bell uh, for the grass type moves here as I goes for the Hydro Pump, but not really doing too much. Go for the Razor Leaf, uh, but doesn't just just barely um, survives that hit as Drake goes for another Floor Restore, healing it back to full health as Victory Bell is confused by a breakout and go for the Vine Whip here, which doesn't really do half uh, health. So go for the takedown of the confusion, hit myself, takedown, finally takes Victory Bell down. Um, as I send in my mill tank to kind of get the revenge kill here, go for the strength, but strength is not enough to take it out as it goes for the confuse rate again. And not wanting to live through that anymore, I just decided to swap that into Alteria and go for the Dragon Breath, finally taking out this Lantern. Now his final Pokemon being a Tentacruel, so I just, you know, swat, uh, stay in, stay in with the ulterior and just get the get the hopeful paralysis with Dragon Breath off. Um, so Tentacruel goes for the Hydro Pump, not really doing too much. Uh, and it heals up a little bit with Citrus Berry. Uh, but at this point I'm thinking, okay, with that, with that barrier move that he used, the defense increase. Gotta start increasing Alteria's attack and speed, but unfortunately I get taken out way too low as he goes for another uh, Hydro Pump that misses, and I decide to sack Alteria there um, unaffectedly, uh, and just go for the Mill Tank for my last two Pokemon. And I just start lead off with the Strength here as it goes for Wrap. Go for another Strength, finally taking out this uh, Tentacruel, netting it as final win. And with only two Pokemon heading into the Champion Battle, I uh, definitely had my work cut out for me because I was hoping that um, this battle, the random, the randomizer would be in my favor. Um, so at this point I'm thinking, okay, it might be since his speed leads with a center as I leave my Swamper going for a strength, a couple strengths to take it out. Now he sends in Bell, uh, Velossum here, and since that's a huge threat to Swamper, I decided to swap into my Milk Tank here and just see, just do as much damage as possible since it got that paralysis off. Um, now it just goes for the pedal dance here. At this point, I'm hoping that I don't get um, paralyzed and that it actually hits itself in confusion. So the first turn hits itself in confusion, but I do get paralyzed. Uh, the second turn, it goes for the solar beam by taking in sunlight, but on the next turn, it hits itself taking its own self out. Uh, up next, he sends in Flygon, and at this point, I'm thinking this is the um, this is the uphill battle here. Uh, so I go for the strength, it doesn't really do too much, but I 
tried to go for the Surf, but it takes me out with the Dragon Breath. I send in my final Pokemon Swamper, go for the Waterfall just to see. It's doing pretty decent damage, and it goes for the Sandstorm, which doesn't affect Swamper at all. Uh, the Waterfall almost takes it out, but uh, Wallace does go for the full restore there. Uh, just hoping that at this point, this Flygon is not really doing too much damage against Swamper, and I can just, you know, take it out eventually using these water moves, as this Sandstorm is really not doing anything for this battle. Now, he does get the Paralysis off finally with Dragon Breath, as he goes for another Sandstorm as I go for Dive here, uh, almost taking it out once more, going for another Waterfall, but Wallace has a bunch of forward storms up his sleeve for some reason. As I go for another uh, Waterfall, just kind of hoping that I can take this thing out eventually, just kind of changing tactics, going for Strength here. Um, now since Strength didn't get the KO there, Flygon's gonna outspeed, take out Swamper, ending the run finally. 